by the time you watch this video and I've decided what I'm going to call it. It could end up being called too many topics to title and uh, I like a bit of alliteration as much as the next man but I'm not sure anyone's going to watch that so I might end up calling it information for beginner woodcarvers or something like that. This is a video I think I would have made at some point. Um, it wasn't on my agenda to do it next but I've seen a couple of things recently that have kind of prompted me to bump it up the list. Some of those were comments on some of my previous videos and the other thing was some videos that I've seen on YouTube recently and uh, well they're just not right. But we'll get into that in a minute. So what I wanted to cover in this video is uh, the responsibility of YouTubers, the truth behind the saying that a sharp knife is safer than a blunt one, and the actual mechanics of how to uh, make the cuts that we use in carving, how to do it safely and effectively. This is uh, an attempt at a red squirrel by the way, it's a James Miller pattern in case you're wondering. So what prompted this was two things really, some comments on one of my previous videos and some videos that I've seen which I've really got to take issue with because they're just not right. Now only one of them is a wood carving video, um, the others were general woodworking ones but there are lots of them about. I mean I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly on YouTube. I'll leave it to you to decide which one of those categories I fall into by the end of this video. Let's start with the positives. So on one of my previous videos I had a couple of, well I had lots of nice feedback actually, lots of comments and I appreciate that from everyone who's left positive feedback and asked interesting questions and things. There were a couple that stood out, so one was um, some words of encouragement from a carver in America called Gene Messer, he's a very experienced wood carver, he's an experienced wood uh, YouTuber and if anything is one of the pioneers of putting some useful carving content on YouTube. Um, he does nicely paced tutorials on carving. All of his videos that I've seen are working in the round, handheld workpiece with a knife, so, so whittling basically. Um, if you haven't seen his videos then, then go and check those out. So he sent some words of encouragement and that was indeed encouraging. And then the other one was um, some comments from a complete beginner. And I mean this is someone who said they've just attempted their first ever carving and in their words, it didn't turn out anything like they wanted it to, and they probably cut themselves more than the wood using quite blunt tools. Well, first thing I'd say is, I don't think anyone's first attempt at a carving turned out anything like they wanted it to. Mine certainly didn't. Um, but the comment about the tools and the fact that they're a complete beginner kind of prompted me on this line of thought, and that was quite motivating as well, because it's great to see new people taking up a craft that I appreciate and enjoy. So this person said they'd cut themselves more than the wood and they were using quite blunt tools and you may have heard the saying a sharp knife is safer than a blunt knife. Well what's the truth behind that? I told my girlfriend that she said she didn't understand it, it was counterintuitive to a lot of people I think. And there's two reasons for it really. Firstly if you do end up cutting yourself with a sharp knife then fair enough it may cut more deeply than a blunt one and that is an issue because your body is constructed in a way to protect itself so you've got skin and fascia and stuff on top of the nerves and the arteries and the tendons that you really don't want to damage. So that's a problem but uh, a cut with a sharp knife will be a relatively clean cut, quite straight and even, it will knit together again quite easily and you won't get too much other damage around it a cut from a blunt knife tends to be a bit more jagged, takes longer to heal and you get bruising and other soft tissue damage around it because it hasn't sliced cleanly through, it's kind of impacted its way in. The main reason why a sharp knife is safer than a blunt knife is that if you're using a sharp knife you don't have to put as much force and as much power into pushing the blade through the workpiece. So you're therefore less likely to slip and less likely to cut yourself in the first place. And that is a really important consideration. So it's true what they say, a sharp knife is safer than a blunt one. The only possible exception is if you drop a knife, trying to catch it, 
the only force there is the acceleration of gravity, but you know, a sharp blade without too much muscle behind it, just dropping, is going to cut you where a blunt one may not. So if you drop a knife, don't catch it. Ideally, you're going to work on a surface where it's not going to damage the knife, but even if you drop it on a concrete floor and, and blunt it, you know, you can repair it. Of course, the other thing to bear in mind is this sharp knives being uh, safer than blunt knives thing. It doesn't really matter. I mean, there are plenty of carvers out there given one decent knife and a means of keeping it sharp could produce better work than I can with a whole raft of tools. But if you gave them a spoon, they're not going to produce anything good at all. So there's no point in using blunt tools, sharp ones, less effort to push it through the wood, less likely to slip, therefore safer, also cut more cleanly, produce better results. Those two comments reminded me of something that I already really knew, um, but kind of clarified for me, I'm somewhere between those two. So I've got a few decades less experience than the likes of Gene Messer, but obviously I'm not a complete beginner either. And it kind of made me think, well, if I'm gonna put out information in videos that I think might be useful to people, I should aim that mostly at beginners because those are the people I can help. If you're a professional or a really experienced carver, you're not gonna learn anything from me. But if you're a beginner, I've got some things to pass on which might be really useful to you. I'm going to offer a famous quote from a non-famous person. If a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And that was a quote from my dad circa 1992. You've probably heard it from somewhere and uh, it's true. So if I'm going to make videos to share information about something that I'm interested in with like-minded people, I'll aim them at the people I can help and I'm going to try and do it properly. There's lots of information out there for beginner wood carvers, and the first thing that most people start with is either inspiration, you know, showing a great carving and saying, look, this is what you could make if you learn. Well, I don't need to inspire you if you already want to take up the craft. You've already got the inspiration, and I don't consider my work to be great. I don't expect it to particularly inspire you. The other thing they do is they talk about tools, they talk about wood, etc. And that's all fine. The topic that's most missed, I would say, is safety. And that's probably because safety is not sexy. People don't want to talk about it. People don't want to hear about it. But if I'm going to do the job properly and I'm going to make videos to help beginner wood carvers, that's the first topic I should cover. I'm going to concentrate primarily on using hand tools because that's what I know best and because power tools and machine tools are a whole different topic almost. Um, luckily enough, carving is a pretty safe hobby, the possible exception of chainsaw carving. If you want to get into chainsaw carving, I suggest you speak to a professional about it. I've done a little with an angle grinder and a wood carving disc and done some garden sculptures, pretty basic ones I hasten to add, um, but I wouldn't want to kind of try and give anyone any advice on that. When it comes to carving with hand tools and perhaps using the odd power tool to rough out a carving, band sawing out, blanks to silhouettes, etc. It's relatively low risk. You just need to be sensible. And really, your safety is your responsibility at the end of the day. You need to take responsibility for yourself. But I've seen the good, the bad and the ugly on YouTube, as I say. There are some really bad examples out there and I want to set a good example. So the first thing I'm going to do is show some methods of cutting um, which are safe and effective and show you how you do that. Okay, so we've got ourselves a nice white background which will hopefully make this clear. So there's a few different cuts you can use. Um, obviously you need to be aware of the direction of the grain in the piece of wood that you're working with and some of the way that you cut is going to be dictated by that. But in terms of just cutting safely, safely there are some uh, basic principles to follow. One thing that you're going to want to learn to do straight away for the terms of safety and um, in also, also to um, take account of the grain direction and to uh, control the cut and stop unwanted splitting is to use stop cutting. So you put in a cut and then you cut 
up to that stop cut. And as the name suggests, the cut stops at that point. I'm actually cutting across the grain here, but um, more especially if I were cutting with the grain, this may have a tendency to split and continue further than I want it to if I'm not careful. So that's a safety consideration and it's something practical in terms of carving. Now, this way of cutting is obviously quite simple. You just hold the knife, back the blade up with your thumb, push it through, and you can either push it through straight or you can treat this as almost half of a pair of scissors. So you can kind of lever like this um, and that can get you through a difficult piece of grain or around a, a shape, for example. You can also slide the blade like this. So straight, scissoring, slicing action. It will depend on what you're trying to achieve, the knife that you're using, the piece of wood. But all those are a pretty safe way of cutting. You're moving the blade away from yourself. The only thing you need to bear in mind is just being aware of where the tip of the knife is in relation to your hand and your fingers. You know, that's the only thing that might catch you out. Um, and obviously the glove will help protect us from that. So that's kind of cut number one. Cut number two, and it's one I use really very often, is what's generally called a draw cut. So you're drawing the blade towards yourself and towards your thumb. The important thing to note is that you're not drawing it with thumb in line with the blade. As far as is possible, you're keeping your thumb out of line. And the way I always describe this is if this is the horizon of your workpiece, I'm keeping my thumb below the horizon. And again, you can draw it straight. You can angle the blade and make it more of a slice if that gets you a cleaner cut in the particular circumstance you're working in. You can kind of do the same thing as with the uh, scissors effect. If you reach a difficult piece of grain, you can work it back and forwards like this. And you can roll the blade if you need to make a curving cut. So and make sure this is clear for you. So hold the workpiece still, draw this back towards yourself, keeping your thumb below the horizon and out of the path of the blade, and use your fingers of your knife holding hand to rotate the blade, and you can curve your cut. Of course, you can do the same thing on the push cut. You can curve that. So the thumb helps provide some of the motive force for it, as well as this hand and then the knife hand, shall we call it, rotates the knife so you can take a scoop. And all of these ways of cutting are nice and safe and you're not going to cut yourself. One thing to watch out for is when you get to a thin edge. So if you've got a corner and a thin piece of wood, any sharp corner really can be a problem. If you're wanting to put a cut in across this piece of wood, you can just put in the tip of the knife and draw it across and it's all fine until you reach this corner and then it's likely to slip. And obviously, if any part of your anatomy is in the way down here, then you may hurt yourself. So the safest thing to do when you reach that corner is to stop drawing it across, place the blade on the corner and just rock it back and forth like this. Then you're not going to slip off. Of course, if in doubt, if you've got a surface you can place that on to make your cut as well, that's even safer. And especially if you've got a thin piece of wood, because this little off cut here is pretty thin. If I were cutting across this, it doesn't really offer any resistance much at all. And that may actually break um, as I'm cutting it. And if my hand or any part of me is behind there, then I might be hurt. So if you can place that on, a work surface and make that cut, then that's another safe way of doing it. So that's about it for, for using a knife. Um, obviously there are specific cuts for techniques like chip carving. Um, as long as you keep your hands out of the way when you're chip carving, 
I'll just grab that knife again actually. You know, you're, you're placing the tip of the blade and you're levering it in um, and you're generally either turning the workpiece around or reversing that angle of the blade. And really, unless you're drawing a line and you've got any part of your hand in the way where you may slip, that's one of the safest ways of carving. So that's not very problematic at all. Just keep your hand out of the possible path of the knife and you'll be fine. It's worth saying something briefly about using gouges and chisels. Obviously, it's uh, very much the same situation that you want to keep your hands out of the, uh, the path of the, the tool. Um, a lot of the time, if you're using gouges and chisels, full-size ones, you're going to have your workpiece held on a bench hook or on a vice or with a hold down. And the way that you usually do it is to keep two hands on the tool and they kind of work in opposition to one another. So if you're doing that and you're not working on a piece of wood that's so hard you need to use a mallet, you will hold the handle in one hand, the shaft of the uh, gouge in the other, push with the hand that's holding the handle and you resist that push a little bit with the other hand so that you can control that cut and you're not going to slip and go too far. Using palm tools and working handheld is a little more difficult to do safely because you haven't got that workpiece held and you can't necessarily keep both hands on the tool at all times but again a bit of common sense try to make sure that your cut isn't going to terminate in line with your hand what you can do is follow a similar principle and put your thumb on here so it's a bit like the way we would use a full-size gouge and push against the tool you, you kind of hold it back a little with that as you make your cut with your your tool holding hand and of course it also means you can guide the tool nice and accurately you can rotate it as and when you need to etc even if your point of contact is only your other thumb in the event that you slip you can guide that blade away from your hand. I would suggest getting a safety glove. I actually got a pair of these um, off Amazon for, I don't know, less than 20 quid. And they comply with a, a European um, standard on cut resistance. So I usually only wear one. I've never cut my knife holding hand whilst carving. It's obviously less likely, but you can easily nick yourself on the, the work holding hand if you're not careful. And for that sort of money, why not? It's nice and grippy. It's thin enough. I haven't really lost any dexterity. It's not a problem to use it. And okay, you might only avoid a minor injury from it, but why not take a sensible precaution like that? And not always easy to get the camera to focus and stay focused on your hands and the wood and the knife and everything whilst you're, whilst you're doing that. But hopefully that's given you um, a few starting tips on how to carve safely. Um, and I'm hoping that will be of use to beginners. Um, as I say, they're the people that I feel I can help. So they're the people I'm gonna aim most of my content at, I think. Um, and that just brings me to the other thing which I wanted to talk about, which is responsibility in, amongst YouTubers and being a discerning viewer. It might seem a bit rich me talking about responsibility amongst YouTubers. I'm, I'm new to YouTube, but I've watched plenty of it. And there are some really good people out there, really talented craftspeople who give good information and who do speak about safety and who care about their audience. And there are also people who film themselves doing stupid and dangerous things and then just put it up there. Now, in a legal sense, they might have no responsibility towards you. If a YouTuber films themselves something do, doing something stupid and dangerous and you decide to copy it and you get hurt, that's legally really not their fault. You're unlikely to be able to take any kind of action against them. But morally, are we happy with that? And also you have to question whether if somebody can't be bothered to look after their own safety, if they really have your best interests at heart. So having said it's your responsibility to look after yourself and you need to learn to, to use tools safely, and I absolutely would stand by that, 
I will try in my videos to set a good example. You do have to allow sometimes for a little bit of do as I say, don't do as I do. Another quote from my dad, uh, because sometimes experienced carvers and woodworkers will do things in a way which is a little bit higher risk than what they will recommend for a beginner, but it's a calculated risk and they are experienced enough to do it. It may also be that there are things which appear worse at some camera angle than they are in reality. But having said that, I've seen some really bad examples recently and that's part of the reason that prompted me to make this video. So one thing I saw was a guy doing some chainsaw carving, holding down a workpiece with his foot in open toed sandals, no safety gear whatsoever. Now, I think that was in a, a country where perhaps there's not such a health and safety culture and maybe it's harder to come by the appropriate PPE. But if you can get the sort of tools that this guy has, you can probably get the safety clothing as well. Um, I don't, you know, if he can't afford it or something, then he has my sympathy and I'm not wanting to kind of mock people who are taking risks in order to make a living because they have no choice. But if he's just chosen to do it that way and he actually has access to a safer, better way of doing it, it's just a cultural thing. Well, I'm sorry, but it's not a good example for everyone. Another one I saw, um, it wasn't a carving video, it was a woodworking one. A guy set himself a time limit, said, right, I'm going to make a box in 10 minutes. And he literally put a timer on the video. He ran around his workshop, it was just a little bandsaw box. He made this box, did a good job. You know, it was fine. It was, it was a, a good end product. He's obviously experienced and skilled at using his tools. He was using his bandsaw, he was using um, his belt and disc sander and all sorts. But he set himself a time limit and then he ran around and rushing whilst using tools is usually not a recipe for a happy ending. He wasn't wearing any hearing protection, any dust mask or anything like that. And he had his fingers so close to the blade of the bandsaw and he was cutting in such a way. You know, if you do that enough times, at some point you're gonna make a mistake and you're gonna hurt yourself. And there's really no need because it's not much slower to do it safely and to use a push stick and to just take care so that you don't expose yourself to that risk. Like I say, he can put that out there on YouTube. I'm not going to name any names. I don't want to embarrass anyone or anything, but you know, there are lots of videos like this anyway. Someone can film themselves doing something like that. And if someone copies it, cuts their thumb off, well, that's not their responsibility legally, but morally, I would like to think people should show a bit more care for their audience. And if they're prepared to take risks themselves, fair enough, but they should be explaining to you, this is not the way I would recommend that you do it. That being said, let's end on the positive. I've had some nice feedback on my previous videos and it's prompted a train of thought whereby I've decided to make this one and I've decided to try and put out some more information for beginners as much as I can, things that I think will be useful to people. So. If you want to get into carving, then, you know, go for it. It's a great craft, it's a great hobby, it's a lot of fun. It can be done safely. I hope you got something from this and I hope you enjoy your carving and stay safe.